This is the Galleon 510 Sky. It's a sports cruiser style with a very cunning secret, which we're going to come to right at the end. It really is quite intriguing. So we're going to head on here. There's an awful lot to share on this. There always is with Galleon. So we're going to start right at the back. There is a uh, high-low uh, platform to lift your tender or your jet ski. This has got a 500 kilogram lift, so you can get a really decent tender on here if you want to, uh, or a jet ski, as I say. And these steps, as this folds down, these become steps down into the water. But what's cunning is there's a garage underneath here. That lifts up, and that's big enough to take a Williams mini jet. So you could, in theory, have two tenders. You probably wouldn't. You put a mini jet in here, put a jet ski on here, whatever. But that's a really useful feature. And then we've also got little barbecue in here as well, like so. You can see what I mean. We've only got this far, not on the boat yet. We're already talking about all the different features. I love these stainless steel engine vents here. This is where your shore power plugs into, down underneath there. And this is very cunning because, like most of these boats, you sit here and you gaze into the boat. Well, that's not where you're going to be looking. You're going to be looking out over the back of the boat when you're at anchor. So if you lift this fella here and then take hold of this and give it a little push, check this out. That is absolutely fantastic. So now you're sitting looking where you want to look, which is at anchor out across the water. Absolutely brilliant. And that, of course, then locks into place. There we go, like so. Fridges in here as well. In fact, they can be freezers if you want. You can adjust the temperature of those. But yeah, that, I think, is genius. Really, really cool. If we come on to here, this one is just a bit of storage. But quite a big bit of storage. There we go. And that one there is an ice maker. And there we are. We are over <laughs> two minutes in. We've not even reached the cabin yet, which is here. And again, the exciting stuff keeps coming. This is a eucalyptus finish. They do about 10 different wood finishes. This is the first one I've seen in the high gloss eucalyptus. Looks really good. This one here is a seat that normally faces in, but this whole panel here slides. Um, and what you do then is you drop this base part here down and you've got this great area here. And the reason you've got that, of course, is because it has drop balconies. So if we come around here, you'll see how that works. You've got big hinges along here, and that whole thing powers up like that, flush against the side when you're out and running. When you're at anchor, you power it down. You put in these rails around the outside, drop in your table. What a fabulous spot to sit and take in the view that is. That is just brilliant. If we come across the other side, they've done exactly the same. Drop balcony. But on this side, you've got your stools. This opens out, window slides again, exactly the same. So that just slides across. These are manual, so they're not going to go wrong. You just pull the catch and slide them, dead easy. And then if we come around here, you'll see them from the inside because galley area is here. And that is that bar area that we just saw. And then down here, you've got things like the fridge is in here. These are all drawers down underneath here. You can tell we're at a boat show because it's full of bags and business cards and brochures and so forth. Hang on. Oh, I've got your blighter. There we go. Is that going to stay closed? That'd be a surprise for the next person that opens it, won't it? Uh, all electric cooking, of course. Your hob is up on top. Uh, underneath here is extractor fan, but you've also got bits of storage tucked around everywhere like so. And then this one down here is the dishwasher. They do pack a lot in, don't they? They really do. 50-foot boat, and as I say, <laughs> you know, we've barely got into the cabin so far. Bit more storage over here. Also, your AV equipment, so the Fusion Hi-Fi, Sony DVD, all that kind of stuff is in there. And that one is a bit of storage underneath. There is, of course, a TV that rises up electrically from here. And what's really nice is over on this side, you've got this wonderful seating area around the table, but the table, as you can probably see, is on telescopic legs. And so what you can do with that is bring the table down, put a cushion on it, brilliant day bed, wonderful place in the evening to sit, watch a bit of telly, that's fantastic. The other thing you can do is these are two separate little ottomans. So just the base, the backrest stays where it is, but the base slides out and you can then put those around the table. So if you've got more people and you want to sit all the way around, you can do. The helm is here, now because it's a sports cruiser style, we've got the opening roof, which as you can see is open at the moment. So that slides back like that, gives you a lovely open feeling just here. There's also a big drop window, you can see it's lowered at the moment, 
with these little lights they put in. Really cute. And then over here, you've got the multifunction displays, two of those, Volvo Penta, engine instrumentation, bow and stern thrusters, wiper controls, switch gear, all the usual stuff, engine throttles and so on. There's one rather clever feature with this, which is, that's the helm at the moment, but of course, when you're at anchor or in the marina or wherever, that's a big wasted space. Well, not on this one, because what you can do is this. There we go, and that is now part of your saloon. Nifty, huh? Let's carry on. So we'll come down these steps here into this lobby area. We'll head forward first of all. And this will take us into the VIP guest cabin. This is very, very gallium because you've got all these glass panels up here in the ceiling. That front one is an opening section. So you get a ton of daylight into here. These all have blinds that slide across them. So of course you can have privacy if you want it. And again, the way they've done all the lighting and set in around here, all very lovely. Pull that one over. You've got AV equipment in here, <laughs> otherwise known as a television. Um, you've got illuminated hanging lockers and storage underneath. These little chaps here are to give you access to some of the engineering behind the scenes. So in this case, we've got circuit breakers in here, battery switches, I think they are for the bow thruster, and so forth. So you can actually get to stuff. There we go. There we are. Close that properly um, when you need to. Loads of storage here, down here, won't open at all, but just to give you the idea, that little fur there is the air conditioning control. And I love the way they've done this headboard around here. It looks really, really smart. Little dressing table over here. That lifts up like so. So you want to keep your Rolex. More hanging space. Here, the other thing that you've got in here, this is the doorway where we came in. There's a second doorway. This has an ensuite. In fact, this is the day heads. But at night, this can be ensuite to this cabin. So you've got the shower area in here and the loo and the sink. But I mentioned it was a day heads because if we come back out here, you'll see there's another door. So that during the day, people can come straight down these steps and they're straight into there. And of course, it also shared by cabin three. And that is behind me. So if you look in here, bunk beds, TV again, big hanging locker again. And uh, big hole window again. There we go. These little square fellows here are uh, ventilation. So those are opening sections. More storage up there. And they've put this sort of opaque panel in the ceiling. So that's light through directly into there as well. If we come out of here then and head back a little bit further past the steps that we came down to get to the lower deck, we will find the owner's cabin. And this is full beam of the boat and is rather lovely. Check that out. Massive hull windows. Look at this. Just a great view out. Obviously, we've got Venetian blinds down at the minute. You can lift those up or you can tilt them for privacy. Now, the galleon next to us there, that is a 485 HTS. And yes, there is a full tour of that on Aquaholic, of course. Um, what else have we got? Again, storage everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Won't open it all. I will open this one, though, because it's rather cute. It all illuminates like so. So that's a nice dressing area. It's the ultimate and soft close, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. And um, AV equipment, but also washing machine is in here. Which I would imagine is a washer dryer. There we go. Very helpful. A load of storage down this side. Again, the big hole windows and a big hanging locker in here with the drawers underneath there as well. Beautiful. And again, all this sort of inset lighting everywhere. Very, very smart indeed. Now, there's an ensuite to this cabin. That's <laughs> what I usually miss on galleons. If you've been on the channel a little while, you'll have seen this. But no, today we've remembered. Here it is. And so what we've got in here is a completely separate shower area in behind here. So this, of course, closes off. And then you've got your sink and you've got your loo. And you've got a bit of storage underneath. Fantastic. And again, the whole windows with the blinds. And again, the little opening section and a little mirror to wave in just there. So that is the lower deck. I think I've remembered everything this time. 
Let's head on out and I'll show you the deck areas because there's something that is particularly fascinating up here. You'll notice there's little traps in the floor. These are for engineering. Again, so that one there, for example, takes you into the top of that tank. So senders and um, pipe work, plumbing, all that kind of thing can all be got at. OK, we'll come back up here. Very proud lion there. <laughs> Why haven't I got one of those on my boat? OK, big opening door here, really connects these areas. And then if we come out of here, we'll wander around the side. So these are these drop balconies again, but this time we're going to go past these, past this little table, and then we'll step up. This one here, incidentally, is a fuel filler tucked away down underneath there. There we go. That's that drop window next to the helm. And then we come right up onto the bow and we've got these areas here. Now these backrests, well, these are quite clever because what you can do, trying to mess up the cushions too much, I oh, will show you this because it's quite clever. What you do with these is you lift this one up somehow. <laughs> ah, here we go. So you can use your fine. There's two of those, of course. These things are always more complicated when you come to do them. So this is why I do my research. Oh, oh. Here we go. So that lifts up like that, and that drops into those like that, and then, of course, that drops back on top of it. So that's a really good way of tucking those away. Exactly the same on the side here. The other thing with these is these move around, so you can move these forward and back. There we go. Depending on how you want to configure the foredeck. So you can bring that one in, like that if you're reaching around a table well then of course that brings you right up to the table and um or you can push it back like we've got this one and then you've got a walkway through here so it allows you to set this up exactly how you want let's come right up to the bow anchor winch anchor locker buttons for the anchor winch and the anchor itself of course right up here on the bow and that's how she looks from there very classic sports cruiser styling isn't it <laughs> wait till you see what's up there okay we'll come back down here and we'll wander down this side, again with the drop window, again with the handrail just there. That's the, um, that opening section that we saw at the helm, like so. And that's the top of the boat. Or is it? <laughs> OK, let's come down here. Come around to the back and you might think, well, why is there steps up on what is ostensibly a sports cruiser well i'm going to show you because if we wander up these steps you will find a button and here it is that says sky deck cover open or close watch this if we hit the open button How cool is that? We've just turned what was a closed sports cruiser <laughs> into our flybridge. Now, I speak as somebody who was a yacht broker for 20 years and spent way too much of his time wrestling flybridge covers on and off. And the ability to push a button and turn this into an open deck is just brilliant. And what you can do, of course, then is just lift these backrests up. How absolutely brilliant is that? Just fantastic. So it was a sports cruiser, and it's now a full-on flybridge. That is brilliant. And then when you're finished, you're out blasting around, and you're back on your berth, and you want to close it all up, you just drop these cushions back flat. Takes you about 15 seconds. Wander down there and hit the button. 
job done. Absolutely brilliant. You might think this helm looks a little bit low. Of course, it needs to be for the cover to be able to slide across it. However, if we push that button, there we go. There's even a little windscreen. Isn't that brilliant? As I say, I speak as somebody who's experienced fighting flybridge covers on and off, and to be able to do that, how long did that take? A minute to do all of that? And that was just showing you as well. If I was just doing it on my own, I'd probably take less than that. That's fantastic. So full function helm here, you've got the multifunction display, you've got autopilot, bow and stern thruster, throttle controls, steering controls, VHF radio, everything, stereo the lot. So you've got everything you need up here. And you can see from again here, that's that sliding roof section that opens above the, uh, the lower helm. Absolute genius. Back here, um, we've got the radar. Domes are all colour coded, radar's colour coded, antenna, all that kind of stuff. All very, very cool, isn't it? Brilliant. Last thing to talk about then is the engines. So we will wander back around here. That's magically turned its way back around again, hasn't it? <laughs> Somebody's wandered past and gone, oh, somebody has turned that around. Right, underneath here, if we lift that one up and out of the way, I'll put it just here very carefully. And then there's another piece here, so you've got a really good sound deadening. And we'll put that, that's really thick and heavy actually, there. And now, we can access the engine space. So, here we go. It's actually a pretty decent engine room. I mean, it's only a 50 foot boat, of course. I say only 50 foot decent size, but you know, you wouldn't expect standing headroom in here and you don't have it. But nonetheless, there's pretty decent height above these engines, especially when you consider it's got a tender garage. You can just see the front of the tender garage there. But that is out of the way. Quite often the tender garages on this side of the boat are over the engines. These are a V-drive. So if we look down here, you can see what they've done is kept the engines fairly well back. There's conventional shaft drive, which you can see running out down under there. So the power comes out the front of the engines, goes through a V-box and comes back underneath. It just allows you to put the engines further back in the boat. You can imagine if you put the engines at the front of those shafts, the engines will be up there where the owner's cabin is. So that's why they do that. These are a pair of D11 725s. They're giving the boat over 30 knots and a cruising speed, 24, 25 knots typically. So she'll zip along pretty darn well. Let's come right up here. And range, well, you know, these sorts of boats are always about 250-ish miles, aren't they? And this one will be about the same. And it's usually if you drop the speed right back, well, then, of course, we get a lot further. But that is a decent engine space, isn't it? Here's the fuel tanks up here. You can see the exhaust routing there, fans at the back corners. There's some of the circuit breakers for the electronics over there, etc. Superb. OK, that as they say, is that. I think we've covered it. I think I've done my first galleon tour. I've not forgotten anything. <laughs> Famous last words. They are just such amazingly complex boats, though. They get so much into these. It's, it's remarkable. OK, let's come out of there. See, even here, storage tucked away. Open that one there. Oh, there we go, it's drawers. <laughs> Try to tilt it open. OK, let's put this back. There we go, and that little fella sits on top. And that is about the size of that. Let's come around here, let's come right up to the bow, to that wonderful seating area up at the front. These are these rams that power this up and down. That's what those fellas are. Welcome to 
Southampton Boat Show. What a beautiful day for it. Excellent. I think all that remains is for me to say massive thanks to Approved Boats. They organise this tour. Huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching it. Do let me know what you think of that one. I think that's a really, really intriguing boat. And we will catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.